Hey, what's going on guys? So today we got the crate club, which is upside down here. So this one is a hefty box. Very curious to see what's uh, what's in there. So I have a new uh, CJRB model. Well, not super new. I've had this for probably four weeks, five weeks, something like that. Um, but you guys haven't seen it on the uh, channel yet. But it is another button lock. I've definitely been in the uh, the button lock phase for a while now. Some pretty cool knives, but they're just fun. Button locks are awesome. All right, so let's bump the camera. That's always good. And see what is so heavy in here. Ooh, okay. We'll readjust. We'll leave our knife out in case we need it. Where do we start? Wow. This is a survival, survival bags. Oh man. There's not much, not much air left in these survival bags. This is emergency oxygen. In case you're underwater or something, you just pierce the bag, suck it in, you're good to go. But uh, these aren't, they aren't very filled, so that's a shame. All right, so onto the real stuff here. <clears throat> All right, so we have a bandage, battle bandage, eight by eight, sterile gauze pad with six by four, uh, clear self-adhering compression wrap. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Again, not sexy, not super fun, super important. I always say this, the emergency medical stuff, the life-saving medical stuff, the water purification stuff, it's just not fun. I was gonna give it a thumbs down, but it's not. It's actually super important stuff. It's just not, not fun to talk about, not fun to look at, and it's stuff that you don't really practice using except for the water purification i do recommend you do that all right <clears throat> there is a uh paperwork here actually we'll save that for the end too all right so where do we go from there let's see we've had stuff from tactica before <laughs> as soon as i lifted this up that got me excited i have it's been a minute since i've had a zt model i hope that's one i haven't had before and that little american flag poking out in the corner there very nice all right, so this is the M.100. We've had a different version of a tool like this. Let's see, what does this one offer? Any, uh, tackle any challenge, that's generic. Um, carry the bits you need to get the job done. That's pretty good. Obviously the progressive wrench thing, that's just been done so many times. Bottle opener, how many bottle openers can you have, right? Feature pack pocket tool. All right, I'll have to play with that later. This does seem like it is, is this plastic? So there's your bit holder. Um, what's going on here? Is this slide open? Something, something's going on there. <clears throat> I don't wanna break it, force it. Oh, oh, that's weird. Bit popped out. So there are bits stored in there, okay. That's interesting. I'll have to play with this later. So it does come with some bits, which is nice. <clears throat> yeah, just, you know, generic kind of multi-tool thing. These can definitely be fun. It just depends on who you are. So let's put that off to the side. All right, what is this thing? We'll get to that in a minute. That looks complicated, I don't know why. All right, Humvee. This is one of the reasons why this thing's heavy. We do have a Humvee emergency shovel. We'll take a look at this one anyway. But these are awesome for your car, specifically for winter. I'm here in the northeastern part of Pennsylvania. We have snow and ice in the winter time. And these are fantastic for emergencies. You don't have to have that for emergencies. If you don't have snow and stuff, you might want to just be digging in your garden, who knows. Um, but yeah, so this unfolds this way, and then this way, and then this tightens, screws down, which locks everything. All right, so now it's nice and tight. So you can pry with that. All right, like if you have some nails or something. Um, not sure what this part is for, large handle. It is nice, you know, get in there. I mean, really, it's kind of an emergency type thing. Um, but stuff like this, like I said, you can use this in the garden as well. It doesn't have to be just for, you know, snow and ice removal. <clears throat> Let's loosen this back up. Did I loosen it too much? Hold on, let's see. Loosen is this way. 
but then it doesn't fall. Oh yeah, it does fold. Okay. They want to force anything. That's it. So it folds up nice and nice and small. Put this away. Very handy. Let's put that off to the right side here. Just a second. Ooh, I love these. Oh, the big ones. The Night Eyes uh, wraps. So it says original gear ties. God, these are these are big. 64 inch, 162.6 centimeters. These are really helpful. I actually use the small ones. I don't have any anything near this size. This, I mean, you could the sky's the limit with these things. You can see they're just just wraps. But because it's so long, you can get around something bigger, or you can get something you know wrapped around smaller multiple times for more grip. Super cool. Lots of ideas. Love that. That's an awesome addition. All right. Well, let's see. What's this? All kinds of stuff. Dan's Honing Oil. Well, I don't know if Dan's makes good honing oil. Dan's Whetstone Company. Okay. This, uh, people ask me all the time. You know, when I sharpen stuff, do you use water? Do you go in dry? <laughs> Raw dog it? Um, do you use honing oil like this? I mean, it really just depends. I've done everything and anything you can think of as far as knife sharpening goes. I don't regularly use honing oil. I will break it out if I'm hand sharpening something and it's super nice and I really want to do a good job and stuff. I'll use honing oil. It keeps the the um, the stone from getting clogged up. It really just depends on what, what's going on there. But, you know, knife sharpening, sometimes I'll just go in dry for a quick sharpen. Just really depends. There's a lot of factors there, but it's still good stuff to have for sure. All right. What is this? Oh, is this a knife? It looks like a knife. Mountain bonded. United by nature. Interesting. California warning. Hmm. All right. I don't think I've ever heard of this brand before. Let's see what this is about. Cut the little tape. Interesting. It's like a little uh, fixed blade there. One thing I like about these boxes a lot <clears throat> is being exposed to all kinds of stuff I never knew existed before. Let's see this paperwork. Mountain bonded. They're very sharp. Always use caution when using knives to avoid any possible injury or damage to the product. Blah, blah, blah. It's not liable for damage for misuse. Okay. Interesting. So just a simple cord wrap knife. I like this texture. You see that? Yeah. It's an interesting texture on that, that sheath there. Wow. How about that? Looks like this is maybe Cerakoted or something. Pretty interesting. MB-111. I don't know what the blade steel is on this guy. Very simple design. Jipping on the bottom for your thumb. Jipping on the top if you want to you know, choke up on it like this for a little fine cutting. I like the camo cord. It's comfortable. Pretty interesting. And I love the double, double uh, eyelets on top. So guess what that means? This is going to be a neck knife for me. But for normal people, <laughs> you'd probably just use the uh, the clip on the back there for the uh, the belt. Very, very cool. I have never seen that brand before. All right, put that off to the side for a second. Oh, yeah. We have not only a ZT, but we have a ZT branded knife pouch. Attaché case, if you will. Pop that off there. These are cool. I don't have a um, ZT branded one specifically. Wow, look at that. All right, so we hold two, four, five, five on the other side, so that's 10. And then we have, looks like eight in the middle. Very, very cool. All right, so sometimes, yeah, this middle piece is Velcro as well. You can take that out if you don't want it. That is really awesome. So obviously you could store whatever you want in here. It's really specifically meant for, you know, zero tolerance knives. Um, maybe it's a good excuse to start a collection of ZTs again. Like I said, it's been a while since I got a new ZT. I do have a couple still in rotation. Maybe I'll do a separate video on that, my favorite one, which has a beautiful custom um, Tamascus pocket clip. That is awesome. So because we saw that, we're going to break into this and see what ZT knife we have. The O350 in black G10. It's a classic model. I have had several. O350s before. They are awesome knives. 
So let's take a look at this one in case you haven't seen it before. Super, super cool. Flipper. We got the little air thing in the back. Look at that beautiful black on black. Canonian design, S30V. All right, obviously the pocket clip here is swappable and reversible. So right now it's set up for right side tip down, which, you know, we want tip up. So I will swap that after the video. Super comfortable, just fantastic ergonomics on this guy. It is assisted, if you didn't, couldn't tell there, it is a liner lock. All right, so you can use a thumb stud or you can use, well, it's really a stopper. All right, so it's a blade stop, but you can use it like a thumb stud if you prefer. But most people probably use a flipper. Just flip it out. Man, locks up beautiful. Made in America. That was the whole thing with ZT knives. It was, it's, you know, owned and run by KAI, the company that makes Kershaw. Kershaw, obviously, is a lot of stuff made overseas. Um, but ZT was their focus on all American-made knives. And uh, it was super hot when it came out. It's cooled off. I don't see a whole bunch of people talking about them all the time anymore. But, but still, they make some excellent stuff. So right down in the comment section, do you rock a zero tolerance knife in your EDC? This is the highlight of this box. I mean, I like everything in here, but this thing is awesome. Really, really cool. In fact, I don't think I have an 0350 in my collection anymore at all. So that was a very nice addition. All right, so I am very interested in whatever this big heavy thing is. What is this? Look at that image. Looking at the image, all I'm thinking of is like a compound bow. I really have no idea. Zip targets. Safe mobile range for all shooting sports. No way. Oh, that is cool. Includes two pulleys, one center bracket, one cord winder, military grade 550, uh, 202 feet. That's very specific. Four cinch straps, four target clips, one uh, quarter inch driver, five paper targets, one carry bag. All right, I got to look up. I got to see how this thing works. Scan for product video. That's what we're going to do right now. Oh, you know what? We're not. I don't have my phone on me. My phone's inside. <laughs> I guess you guys will have to look this up. ZipTargets.com. Because uh, I'm very curious how this thing works. I'm wondering I'm wondering if it's actually moving or it's just something like almost like a clothesline where you could stand at one location and just, you know, zip, zip it out there, take some shots. You know zip it back kind of like an indoor shooting range you know manually that would be pretty interesting um although walking is good for everyone <laughs> if you don't want to walk or just want to shoot a lot and not walk back and forth um that would be an excellent idea and with that i will tell you a story this is a mini story time video my grandfather i went to go visit him god rest his soul he had a, a weird sense of humor and he was a no bs kind of guy this is my my father both my grandfathers were but this is my father's father i'm talking about and uh, I stayed with him when I was about 13 years old. I stayed with him for a week. And the idea was to kind of bond. It was just me and him. That was it. This guy lived alone, you know, for 35, 40 years. Um, he was definitely set in his ways. And he was definitely a guy that was always teaching you a lesson, you know. So I remember, again, 13 years old, never shot a gun at all. And he asked me randomly, hey, you want to shoot some guns? Like, wow, real guns? That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely want to. So he broke out um, his 22, which I want to say was, it wasn't a lever action. It was a, uh, a pump 22. I have no idea what model. It was many years ago. Um, he had a, a 222 rifle, a 243 Winchester rifle, both his hunting rifles. Um, and I want to say he had a shotgun, like a 20 gauge or something. Uh, he also had a pistol. He had that little Beretta, which I, I do have in the collection. And uh, he told me to go set up a target. And he said, you know, this is at his property. And it's basically like a, 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 a hill, right? The whole thing's a hill. So he had me set this target up about 50 yards down this hill. I walked down the hill. I set up the paper target. It was on like a metal frame, you know, like something you get at Walmart. Only this is like an old-fashioned one, probably from the 70s or 80s. Um, I walked back up the hill. He handed me the 22. I took a shot. I, mind you, one shot. You know, he obviously went over the safety and how to use them and everything. Took the shot. I was like, wow. And even though I had hearing protection, I thought that was way louder than I thought it would be. And I was super excited. 13-year-old. And by the way, I'm quite fat. <laughs> 13 years old. I'm a husky boy. 
as uh, Mr. Wilson would say from Dennis the Menace. Um, so anyway, so that's an important point of the story. That's why I'm bringing it up. So I, I set it up. I took my one shot. I'm like, wow, that's awesome. He's like, yeah, why don't you go down there and see wh where you hit? And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. And I, I walked down the hill and I looked at the target and I think it was like, you know, it was in the circle, but it wasn't anywhere near the bullseye uh, or the 10 mark. It was like a number three or something like that. It was simple, you know, one to 10 rings. And so I walked back up the hill and I said, oh, I got number three or whatever it happened to be. And he's like, oh, it's good. And, you know, you know, hopefully you can do a little better. You know, take another shot. So I go through the process, take another shot. He's like, all right, go down there and check it out. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So I walk down there. I'm coming up the hill. I'm huffing and puffing. I'm like, wow, I, I got a number 10. My second shot, I got it in the 10 ring. He's like, wow, good job. See if you could do it again. Third shot, fourth shot, fifth shot. And we got to like the seventh or eighth shot. I, I'm, I'm huffing and puffing. And, and at this point, like number five, six, and seven, they're kind of sporadic because I'm, I'm like heavily breathing. So I'm having a hard time focusing and, and taking my shot, you know? And plus, it's exciting, too. So as a kid, I'm, I'm kind of rushing my shooting. I'm not really just taking taking it all in and really practicing. It's just exciting. So I want to shoot as fast as I can, you know. So at some point, I know my grandfather has binoculars. And I ask him, I'm like, well, why don't you get the binoculars so that we can just see the where I'm hitting from here? Oh, no, no, that's okay. They're all the way upstairs. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, hey, you want to try a new gun? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we tried the, the pistol. Same distance, which is way too far for that pistol, especially for, for my age. Same deal. Take a shot, go down there, come back. I'm huffing and puffing, take a shot. We went through all the guns, and this took probably, I don't know, 35 minutes, 40 minutes, something like that. And I'm dying. I'm dying, huffing and puffing, just heavily breathing and, and just trying to catch my breath and stuff. And I say, all right, well... All right, I think I'm done because I'm I'm really like having a hard time <laughs> walking back and forth. We probably took I want to say maybe maybe ten shots on each rifle, you know, each gun, and then the shotgun I never actually got to shoot because at this point I'm I'm just too tired. I'm too tired from walking back and forth. So here's the thing: nothing was ever you know mentioned further from that. Nothing was ever um, talked about from that. But as an adult looking back. I know that he had me do that because he was getting me to exercise. That's how my grandfather was. There was a lot of stuff I did, you know, that was supposed to be character building. But really, it was just, move around, kid. You're too fat, you know. And he would openly say that, you know, all the time, too. Um, so, yeah. I mean, like I said, he, he, had a, he had a weird sense of humor. But uh, that was just his way of, like, hey, dude, exercise. You're, you're overweight. There's no reason to be overweight. So... I love my grandfather. Um, I miss him dearly. He was definitely, like I said, a character. But yeah, as a kid, I, I never never gave that, you know, an extra thought at all. But as an adult, I look back and there's a lot of different things randomly like that. And like I said, everything was kind of a lesson. Um, I remember, I'll tell you another quick little story. My, my dad, when he got a brand new car, my grandfather had a massive German Shepherd. His nickname was literally Bloody Fang. Uh, his, his actual dog name was Odin. Um, and this dog was taller than me. It was taller. It was about as tall as my dad standing up. Like, we'd come to visit. This this dog really, really intimidated me. It would jump on my shoulders and almost knock me down, you know? Um, and then way, way, way later, the dog actually attacked my grandfather's girlfriend at the time. Almost ripped her ear off. Um, so that was a whole separate thing. But this dog was super, super intimidating. And, you know, my, my parents came up to visit my grandfather my dad's got a brand new car. I think it was a, a Nissan Altima. And uh, the dog runs out to say hi. You know, jumps up on the on the door. He's scratching the door. Dog lifts his leg, you know, pees on the tire. You know, my grandfather is outside sitting on the deck laughing, just cracking up. Now, of course, you know, a normal person would probably be yelling at the dog, hey, come here, come back. Come on, Odin, come on. No. He didn't care. He thought it was a lesson, a lesson learned. Like, hey, you get a, get a brand new car, I'll give you your first scratch. You don't have to worry about it. You know, I remember um, not too long after that, again, the car's still pretty new. We went to the fair together, the county fair. And my grandfather took my, he said, all right, well, you just follow me. So it's me and my mom, my sister, and, you know, my dad and, and the pretty new car still. And he goes down this dirt road, this rock road, and he's kicking up dirt and rock and all kinds of crap on my dad's brand new car. And, um... There was no reason for him to go that way. He definitely went out of the way to go down that road because that's the dark humor that he had. Now, most people would say, like, oh, that's a horrible father. You have a horrible grandfather. 
but that's not how it was. He was extremely loving. He just had his own sense of what's right and, and how to teach someone a lesson. You know what I mean? That's how he saw it. Most people would see like, that's horrible. Why would he want his son's car to have a scratch in it? Again, he would think like, well, there's your first scratch. Now you don't have to worry about it. It's just uh, kind of strange, but, um, you know, in his own way. So anyway, um, so that's that. That's my, my first shooting story ever. I was huffing and puffing, but I loved every moment of it, and they, it has brought me memories. And I shot many times those rifles and stuff after the fact as I got a little bit older, um, you know, with my grandfather. And those were all amazing moments, you know. And, and even today, whenever I get a chance to shoot with my dad, um, it means a lot. It means a lot to sit there and spend that time with my dad. Anything, whether we're fixing something together or, you know, shooting the guns or, or whatever, just talking about, you know, whatever we're talking about. I cherish those moments because I know one day it just won't be available anymore, you know. But my grandfather, like I said, I had a limited experience with him. Um, stayed with him when I was 13 for a week. If you watch the videos, I, you know, went on a long, you know, road trip with him across the country. That was amazing. And uh, it wasn't that, that long after that that he passed away. I didn't have a, a, a time with him alone as an adult. You know, a, as a mature adult to really, you know, have those adult conversations. And uh, I regret it. I miss it. So, um, you know, just one of those things. If you got an old grandma, grandpa, give them a call. You know, sometimes old people can be seem annoying, you know, but um, trust me, one day when they're not there anymore, you're, you're going to wish you did, you know. So there's a little, a little heads up if you still got your grandparents in your life. Spend some time with them. Make some memories. So anyway, that is all. Awesome knife. Awesome case. Very, very interesting target. I'm very uh, excited to see, you know, how this works. Very, very cool fixed blade. Um, you know, very cool ties. Not so exciting <laughs> multi-tool. Uh, not so exciting, but super important bandage. All right, not so exciting, um, you know, honing oil, but it'll definitely get used kind of a thing. And middle of the road, kind of fun, kind of cool. Uh, been there, done that, though, with the Humvee um, shovel. So before I go, let's go ahead and check out this paperwork here real quick. I'll give you a... Little shot of each thing if you want to read that and read that, and of course, read that. And then if you want to read that and read that, actually, I want to read this, I want to see the blade steel on here. Uh, at only 1.9 ounces, the Alpha is the go to knife that does it all. Whether you're an avid hunter needing a, a knife to cape your animal, uh, fly fisherman needed to clean your day's catch, or just want an all around. All around knife to use around camp. The Alpha has you covered. All right, it's D2. D2 steel, 1.9 ounces. How about that? Whoop, one more page. Then we got that. Oh, we have a nice shot of... Okay, so there we go. So it is It is a zip. Oh, that's really cool. So you just use a tree or a post if you want to put a post in, I suppose. And that's exactly what it looks like. That is really awesome. So you can hang some clays off here as well. Dude, I am super excited for this. I am definitely checking this bad boy out next time I go shooting. So anyway, that's all. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you have an awesome day. Hopefully you enjoyed the stories. And I will see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.